Hello everyone. Welcome to Rural Water Resource Management NPTEL course. This is week 11, lecture five. In this week, we have been looking at data for understanding the rural water resources. In the last weeks, we looked at rainfall data and also looked at selecting one data from the set and downloading it. We also noted that there is a lot of agencies that are collecting data. So it is important to understand which agencies data is good for us. And that is where the focus is um, in downloading the data. When I mean which agency is good, uh, it is up to the user to find the data sources and then look at which data is appropriate for the study site at time. There's a study site and a time, right? So both has to be looked upon. In today's lecture, we will be looking at surface water storage and river data. In your water budget equations, we notice that the, there is a storage component, there is a rainfall, ET, groundwater in, groundwater out. And then there is a discharge runoff. So that is what we'll be looking at in this uh, lecture, surface water storage and river data. We will cover as much. Uh, and since I'm showing live demo in the uh, tutorial or in the lecture, uh, depending on the internet speed, we will cover the lecture. If it spills too much, we will uh, cover it up in the next class. Remember that most of the data downloading method and selecting location is the same, even if you change the data. Okay, so from groundwater to uh, surface water or rainfall, everything, the method in using the website is the same. We notice that WRIS database has a archive of all these data. And that is why we would be focusing on downloading the data from this website and methods on how to download the data. Without further ado, let me start with the um, data for storage and river. Uh, but please understand that we are now jumping into uh, an area which is governed by many agencies, including international, national and state. So it is not going to be that easy to find the data because most of the data is under sensitive umbrella, which means it cannot be downloaded that easily. You'll have to go to the office, and explain why you need the data. It is not available for free for everyone to download. What do I mean that these uh, some structures are uh, transboundary, which means it's international waters. For example, we have uh, the Ganges Basin, which starts somewhere in Tibet, China, and then comes down to Nepal, and then comes down uh, the path to India. Right. So the boundary of the basin is across nations. So how do you monitor the Ganges water? Same Brahmaputra uh, and then other, other major rivers in the world. Let's look at India alone. We also have state boundaries. For example, the Kaveri issue is one of the biggest issues uh, which is contested in court, the water sharing issues. And the data is available but it is not available for free and easily available for others to download. So these are the data sensitivities that we need to be careful about. 
So uh, let's look into the website. Uh, it is the WRIS website. And under the WRIS website, we need to go to the water data platform. Uh, and then from the water data platform, we have to go to surface storage. And then there's river separately. So let us start with the river storage. So we are back to the home page. Go to water data, and you could see that surface water is there. And under the surface water. There are multiple uh, options. One is your storage, which is your, it could be a uh, tank. What it says is it could be a tank or it could be reservoir. Tanks are smaller, reservoirs are large. And then there is some studies on the reservoirs. For example, what is the sediment load? Uh, is it sustainable design? Those kind of things, which you can access from the list. Okay, let's just click on to see how many reports there are. And you could see that there are multiple reservoir sediment studies. Why is this important to understand? Is because once the sediment builds, your storage in your reservoir is lessened. So one of the key rural water management activity is to find the sediment loading and then remove the sediment through activities uh, through machinery, etc. Okay. So you can filter this uh, through uh, whichever dam you want. And let's say Tamil Nadu um, to try to see if it filters by state. Okay. So some of these are still not, yeah, now it's filtered. So I just hit Tamil Nadu, wait for some time. And now all the Tamil Nadu ones have come up. Okay. So you will see that this um, one is available and you could go and select that as a wire to see the study. Study would normally be a PDF report if you want to study it. Okay. So this one is the Aliyar Dam. I'm just going to go close. Yeah. So after you go too close, I think it's stopping uh, to, to show the highlights. So you can see here, here's where you have the uh, Alia Dam. And then you could go here and download the report. Okay. So you can see the survey which has been done. If you click on the survey type, okay, here it is the Alia Dam. It was gone. Uh, it was done in the 2005. Agency was NRSA and CWC, which is the Central Water Commission. Uh, storage, live storage, and dead storage. All these storage characteristics are done. It is not a survey with the people, but a physical survey. Okay, present live storage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is about the sediment uh, studies, and you can download uh, the as Excel all this data as Excel if you would like. So I'm going to go back to the storage, water surface storage. And then I also want to show the tanks. So there are multiple tanks, okay? So the tanks usage and everything depends on um, how you would like to use it for agriculture or it is um, for also domestic use. So minor ir irrigation tanks are given. MI uh, stands for minor irrigation and default it goes to AP because that, that's where the, a lot of data is there and there's no other data, right? So um, you could only select Andhra Pradesh and, and download it. So Andhra Pradesh looks like has been a progressive state for having these data locations. We have number 37,000 or around 38,000 uh, tanks and 62% uh, of them are um, the overall average is fill percent for 1 June to 22 July. So the average uh, from that area, from that period 
is around 62 percent full okay and you can go down and see which tanks are there we are going to focus back on the reservoir so i'm going to go storage and reservoir reservoirs are dams irrigation dams bigger dams okay uh, the other one which was there was the lakes and ponds where you have a level if you want to do a level study and stuff okay so this is the india map that comes up which i also showed in the slide and you could see that by default the agency is cwc which is a central water commission but just to be clear let's see what other agencies are uh, no other agency um, directly can involve like uh, the central agency uh, but uh, the state agencies have their own um, limits boundaries so initially the whole of water resources can be monitored by CWC and the state agencies can help in monitoring these or they can also have their own separate data for monitoring these reservoirs. Remember, it's not only the one part um, of the reservoir uh, can be built uh, all throughout by the state uh, because some of these reservoirs, if you block, then downstream communities uh, may protest and these downstream communities could include your downstream states also. So the, the, the case between um, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu on the Kaveri is the same, right? You build a reservoir and if the water is stopped, then the downstream communities would ask to release the water based on the need. And that is where we would um, see multiple agencies monitoring the data. So let's, uh, for keeping it uh, more robust, I'm going to put all agencies and it is monitored daily, similar to the rainfall that we saw in the last class. The reservoir data is monitored daily. And you could see for whole of India, zoom out a little bit more. Yeah, so for the whole of India, you could see 90% full for the time period given, which is June to March. See, June to March should capture your good seasonal dynamics because June is when your monsoon starts, at least in the Western Ghats region. And then by the next March, it's almost empty because of the uh, summer period coming. And also the water may be used for the rabi crops and winter crops. So what you see here is there are around 138 reservoirs monitored, not total reservoirs in India. It is the number which is being monitored by all these agencies that have given data. Suppose there is a PWD, for example, in Tamil Nadu. If they don't give the data, if I zoom in, you can see. See, if they don't give the data, then it's not populated. It's very simple logic. Um, uh, this website only hosts the data and the location of the reservoirs that are provided data. Since there is a lot of sensitivities, not all dams data are shared and the location is also kept a sensitive. So now you could see that, uh, for example, the, the Karnataka is here, and then you could see the Kaveri, Kalai Kaveri coming and then flowing through Trichy and going out. So there is a dam um, a reservoir along the um, Kaveri and there's Metu uh, reservoir, Metur. And then this is the Bhavani Sagar, lower Bhavani Sagar. Let's now look at some of it. Um, and you could see only one reservoir, at least in Tamil Nadu, Vaigai, is around 90%. Okay, or greater than 90%. So the coloring is given to show that uh, is the water levels um, coming or if they are uh, having any issue with the water levels. Okay. So what you see here is the key rivers in India and along it there are reservoirs. Uh, the Samasalaya Reservoir, you have here the um, 
Jake One Naga Nat Sagar Reservoir. And one of the uh, key ones are also here where you have um, inter, inter uh, state transfer and also uh, between states when you want to transfer water, these reservoirs play a vital role. So there's one more blue here. If you click the reservoir, it, the name comes as Sharda Sargar. Okay. So now similar to the rainfall data, we could do a state-wise analysis. Again, I'm going to go back to Maharashtra. Why? Because you could see here, there's a lot of data for Maharashtra and a lot of reservoirs being mapped. So let me uh, go to Maharashtra. I just, uh, for this period, time period, I'm not going to change the time period. Let's keep it. And within that time period, we can definitely mix and match the time to show if it is completely turning blue, okay? Blue means it is 100%, almost 100% full. So in this period, the average um, uh, reservoir capacity is only 61%, not more than that. Uh, and you could see that the data also shows uh, the data, you can just click here, the legend, okay? The legend also shows that there is only um, a couple of classes, greater than 90% is blue, uh, and then you have the 70 to 90%, 50 to 70, less than 50, and then no data available, okay? So there's no data available, it's also important to show that Maybe it's sensitive, so they're not sharing the data. Okay, so in Maharashtra, I've clicked. Uh, so the, the Maharashtra name has come. If you come down, you could see how many um, districts are there and what are the uh, number of reservoirs in each district. Okay, so Pune is known as a district with a lot of reservoirs. And um, so I'm going to click Pune. And you could see that the Pune's location has come up. I'm just going to, because now we know the legend, right? 90%, we're looking at the blue ones, which are very important. So this is the Pune district. And you could see that uh, you have uh, the Shivaji Sagar uh, uh, Reservoir and Urmodi. Um, this is the Bhima Ujain Reservoir. All these uh, major reservoirs have been captured in the Pune region. Okay, so you could see this is the Pune region and you can count it to see how many reservoirs, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, right? So here's also two more. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So all these six names are given below. You can see the names and the agency which is monitoring them, which is CWC. Here there is no, how, while the rainfall is monitored by other agencies as well, in Maharashtra, most of these water bodies are monitored by CWC as per the data. And the date and time of the last recording is given as uh, 23 March, 2022, which is just a week before uh, this recording. So what I'm trying to say is these are live data. It's not that old that uh, you cannot use it. So it is kind of um, uh, live, not as daily, like right now, what is the level? Lively means, which is uh, just from the last week. It's not too old. So the farmers can use this to understand that, how much water is coming. And will it be uh, enough to sustain the agricultural crop? So I'm going to click one of the biggest ones, which is the Bhima Ujain. Okay. So once you click that reservoir, the page updates to only the reservoir data. So you could see here, it's turned yellow as a highlight. And also on the top, you would see that Maharashtra, Satara district, Bhima Ujjain reservoir. Okay, so uh, even though I said Pune, I wanted to have the bigger one to just capture the, the um, you know, total capacity and stuff. So you could see here the current year level, which is, excuse me, which is given in yellow. And then you have the um, orange level, 
the pink level, which is the full reservoir level. So the full reservoir level is around uh, 1.1 BCM, right? Uh, billion cubic meters. And you could see that in the last year or the current year, uh, June to March, you could see that the water level raised and it met the full storage. After it meets the full storage, then what will be released? They won't keep the water storing, storing. There is some volume that can be added to the full storage, but it is advised not to do it because it might um, be dangerous to uh, um, keep on adding water after a particular level and uh, it might um, weaken the structure or the, the irrigation dam uh, and or it might uh, also lead to more flooding downstream. So you could see that uh, uh, the last 10 years average is up there and the orange is current year storage, which means your current year storage is above the average, which is a good point. And the last year storage is also given, which is last year and this year, not much difference. And then the 10 year average is given by this line. So the pink line uh, just uh, tells about uh, is the reservoir uh, storing uh, more water or is losing more water. Now, since this is Maharashtra, I'm just going to do a June to uh, September or August. Let's do August because by that time the, the capacity is full. And look at it only that reservoir. Uh, would be shown initially, uh, but since we said all agencies, all the 432 uh, across this period have come. Now, if you see the numbers change, In the previous one, it was only 138. Now it is 432. What happened now is because we added a shorter time frame, and that time frame may be the data is available. So it is not only that the data is not showing because uh, the data is sensitive, uh, but it may be not showing be because those there are data gaps. There is no point of showing the data gaps, right? So that is where um, this happens. And as I said, I'm just going to show something. Uh, I think this is a different district, but let's see how much water is available. So you could see that the um, um, The district uh, block I have selected is, uh, let us see this here, is Satara, okay? And in Satara, there is four uh, reservoirs. I'm just gonna come down and then see what are the reservoirs and what are the agencies. So all of them are CWC, uh, which is monitoring the data. And for that particular time frame, I've got data June, July, August, only three months I have a requested data. And you would see that it is coming uh, around 1.1, um, 1.2 uh, billion uh, cubic meters storage. This is how you could collect data monthly from a reservoir, click it, and then download the data. You could also do daily which would make more sense because your rainfall is coming daily your runoff is generated daily and you could say that okay from june um see normally uh, here it the the monsoon picks up in june right so i'm going to say july we have and until december So you automatically give me, um, uh, yeah. So let's do one part. So June, as I said, uh, is, a, is starting of your monsoon. So let's do first of June daily until December. Yes. And then I get submit. The one concern is it might pull again back to India. Yes, it does. So you will have to come back to the state, which can be done here. This is same to other uh, data also. So that's why uh, I, I'm just going to show it one time. 
you could apply it for the rainfall data, soil moisture, ET, all these data you could, you could apply. Since it's doing the whole of India, you can see how big the chart is. See how big the chart is. We don't want the entire country uh, to be shown. We just want to have the Bhima Sagar. Just want to see if it pulls it up. No. Oh, it's only state. There's no name, right? So Maharashtra. So there are 10. I'm going to click Maharashtra. The line number is 10. And now 24. So now that's zoomed in. And as I said, I'm just going to go to Pune because Pune has six uh, reservoirs and the total reservoir is very high in Pune storage. Okay. And you could see here the data for all the Pune reservoirs, six of them are here and 90% they are full. So you could see that because of the rainfall and there's a good rainfall in this region, all the dams uh, are now full of water uh, or almost full 90%. And then um, most of it is uh, above 90. That's why you get the average as 90. Um, and then what would happen is you can download the data uh, as the current year st storage last year. Let's do last 10 years to just show you that how big the rainfall has increased from uh, August. Okay, so now we could come down and see which reservoirs we want to do. You can also uh, click and choose. I think we could say that the um, Sivaji Sagar is good, Musli Dam is good. Uh, let's do Musli Dam. Right. So now it has been highlighted as a green color and almost it touched the total capacity of 100%, but then it's going down. Right now, the um, after the, uh, the uh, monsoon period, the rainfall does go down. And as the rainfall goes down, your reservoir capacity also is reduced. Okay. So this is how you could select one reservoir, go to the location, put up a date and say daily, and then daily date data you could download. So if you click CSV, you click download, you can do a download as a nice CSV and then move it into the actual uh, Excel sheet. So if you don't know how to convert a CSV to Excel, that's fine. You just open the CSV, it looks like an Excel, copy it into an Excel sheet and save it. So what is it called? The Musli Dam? What is the basin? Krishna Basin? All these data is given in this um, uh, sheet. Even in the Excel sheet, it will come. But on this web page also, you can take it. So the district is Pune. Your lat longs are given where this dam locates. And also the uh, water levels are given uh, to just show that what is the capacity in that period. So with this, I will uh, finish off the today's course on uh, downloading the data for reservoirs. Now we know from the watershed balance equation, your precipitation is known, your reservoir is known, uh, which is basically your runoff water coming into the reservoir. And then slowly we'll also talk about soil moisture, evapotranspiration, and the river discharge, which is very important for uh, the crops, lift irrigation, those kind of things. Um, I will also note that there is um, uh, current live storage. It doesn't mean it's now the current storage, but uh, the uh, storage during the last day of the uh, time. Input. Okay, so you put December, so it's December. So. Date and time is 31st December we put. So for that date, what is the uh, life capacity and current life capacity? All these are collected daily. So there is a good database of it. Uh, I haven't done the recap as I used to do, but I will do that when I start week 12, which is the last lecture. I will see you soon in the last lecture series. Thank you.